we're very sorry, our viewers at home, for the break in transmission. So was, we were discussing, we we're talking about the social development. How practical can companies relate and exercise the social development when it comes to the ESG imperatives? We said companies should operate ethical supply chain, ensuring that they deal fairly with their suppliers. They should encourage diversity within the company amongst the employees, giving equal opportunities, not discriminating. They should ensure that issues that has to do with sexual misconduct are properly addressed and are not encouraged within the organization to make sure that women are properly protected who are their employees. They make sure also that wages are fairly paid and in, you know, being looked at in line with standard practices in the society, not paying employees poorly, such that at the end of the day, they have a high turnover of employees, which reduces and diminishes the image of the company. The governance aspect, how practical can companies deal with the governance? In terms of corporate governance issues, what are the practical steps companies have to take? They have to ensure that they embrace diversity on their board. Not that the board of directors are only filled with people from a particular tribe or from a particular community. And then at the end of the day, the investor will say, this, this is only, this, this company is for this kind of people. I can't invest in them. It has already discriminated, even without knowing. And that is not corporate governance. That's not proper corporate governance. There should be diversity on the board. If we go to see international companies, look at their brochure, range of people on their board of directors. It brings value, expertise, standardization into such companies. Companies have to embrace transparency in their corporate dealings, in their accounting methods and forms, in their tax computations. There should be transparency. Also, in terms of corporate governance, another practical step that companies have to take is to ensure that the chief executive officer is an independent member of the board. They have to employ an independent person. Most of the time, it could even be someone that does not really have shareholding. But the person can make rational decisions and be objective and not tilt into the whims and caprice of some set of people in the company. So having discussed some of these practical steps, what are the pros, cons, what are the merits and demerits of this ESG criteria? Things that have advantage definitely will have disadvantages. So we know that in past years, socially being responsible, investments that are socially respons responsible had the reputation for requiring a trade-off on the investor's part. What do we mean? Because they are limited in terms of the universe of the companies they are eligible to invest in. But now, the investor's potential is no longer limited. They can look into those companies and see, am I willing to invest in this company? What are the values of this company? It's not just enough for the company to just be making profit. Some companies are worth investing in because their stock price, their share price is rising. And yes, you know that, yes, if you invest in, you know you're not really going to lose. It's not as if the company is going to go um, extinct in the next 50 years. Yet, there are factors that could happen. So investors have to be very careful. Some investors these days have come to believe that the ESG criteria has a practical purpose beyond any ethical concerns. So by following the ESG criteria, investors may be able to avoid companies whose practice could be a signal as a risk factor. Issues of oil spill, we, we remember the Volkswagen emission scandal. 
you know, the BP's oil spill issue. Both of which rocked this company's stock prices to their foundation and resulted in billions of dollars being lost by these companies. So these are very, very important. Investors can't be too careful though, because things happen. However, they can try and mitigate the risks and the losses. So as ESG-minded businesses, practices are gaining more traction in the society, in the economy, in the global international trend. Companies, investment firms are now increasingly tracking the performance of these companies that are entrenching ESG criteria in their businesses. And it is very, very important because then investors, when they go to their financial consultants, they can ask, what companies do you think have the potential to last longer? Because, like I said, it's not just enough to make profit. A lot of factors are involved. And inculcating ESG imperatives, the environmental, social, and governance criteria into the company's business will make the company go a long way. Or otherwise, make the company go the dead way. It depends on the choices being made. What are our conclusions today? What have we discussed? We have discussed ESG imperatives under the company law. We have explained to us what the environmental, social, and governance criteria mean what are the regulations and legislations put in place using Nigeria as a case study? We have also looked at the practical steps companies can take to ensure that these ESG criteria are properly entrenched in their business operations. What are our takeaways from this discussion? Environmental, social, and governance criteria are now increasingly popular way for investors to evaluate companies. That is the word, evaluate companies in which they might want to invest in. Any investor, foreign investors, local investors, bringing in funds into any company, not counting the cost by looking at the ESG criteria entrenched or imbibed by that company could be making a very big mistake. So many brokerage firms, mutual funds, companies, now offer products that employ ESG criteria. So financial consultants now, they offer those products, the stock firms, so you as an investor, you don't have any excuse because they'll give you, yes, these companies, they are worth it. Apart from, yes, they are making money, they are also being responsible ESG-wise. ESG criteria can help investors to avoid companies that might pose a greater financial risk due to their environmental or social development practices. So today, I believe that with the little we've been able to discuss on ESG practices, We've learned something new and something worth taking on board if we want to invest in businesses. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for participating today. And I hope to see you again in our coming episodes. My name is Yumen Esther. Have a lovely weekend and God bless you.